Tonight is February the 23rd, 2020. And here's something that was made. This uh, uh, excited here was made in uh, 1947. So it's 73 years old. It's called 310B. This is a uh, James Millen RF Power Amplifier Model uh, 80991. I had to change this meter out up here. It was bad. Ring broke in it. And this is a power supply I've built where I can uh, vary the voltages from, uh, I don't know if you can really see it, you have to vary both of them at the same time 2000 or 2500 or 3000. Anyway, it's just in a simple uh, <clears throat> full wave center tap supply. I got to show you all of it. I can't really get in there, so you can't see much in there. Got a pair of 812s. So back over there, it's got a link coupled plug and plate tank circuit. Can you see that back there? Yeah. See, there's a capacitor. It's not fully meshed or, or fully open. That's good. Uh, there's the input right there to a, a link. I had to uh, make that coil right there because I didn't have one. This one right over here was a, a 40 meter coil, but I cut it down to 20. You can see the neutralizing capacitors down in there. Cool stuff. Actually, this thing was published uh, November the 12th, 1948. I don't know, that kind of helped me drive it along because my birthday is November the 12th, 1949. <laughs> so there you go. Well, here's the cool part about it. You want to see the cool part about it? It works. A little over 300 milliamps at about 1300 volts. I don't have enough drive yet. Uh, that's grid current, which is only about 20 milliamps. Everything dips and peaks exactly like it's supposed to. And there's its output. I don't know if you can, I think you can see it. You can oftentimes see it better. It's only 200 watts right now. This is a 2500 watt element. You can see right there. So there would be uh, 500 watts. So it's, it's at 200 watts. But uh, the 812s I have in there, you can actually see a little bit of color around them. I don't know if I can. Yeah, you can, you can see it's, it's too hot. But I do have a fan blowing over it. One of the 812s is, is really very strong, and one is actually very weak. Here's another thing that amazes me is the accuracy of this thing. After all this many years, I mean, I've used it, but it's been a long time. I really probably ought to go through and check the, the one or two uh, electrolytic type capacitors that are in it. But you see, these old ones have these oil fill capacitors. I guess they last darn near forever. Got a couple of voltage regulators, 5V4 and a, a 5R4, etc. It uses uh, 6AG7 drivers to a 2E26. There's its tuning a little bit open right there. I'd, I'd like a little bit better match than that. I'll have to tinker with that. I'm running it with uh, minus 150 volts bias. See, it uses plug-in coils too, but they're in-linked. Now, the interesting thing about it, see, I'm just showing you this, this thing works. It's all in a rock. Um, right here is the grid tuning. When I tune the grid, the uh, the grid peak, you, you tune the grid for peaking the grid, which you'll see right there. You see them both move at once because when we peak the grid, we're we're driving it. So the plate current's peaking, and then over here with plate tuning, we turn it till it dips, and there's where it dips. And if you look closely, you'll see that it dips at the same point that the grid peaks, which means that it's actually properly neutralized. I may tinker with those capacitors a little bit. But up here is a lot of tuning. There's a lot of tuning in this thing. We've got to do the plate tuning. We dip this right there. We can also see it right here. Right there. Actually, I think if we do it like that, we, yeah, we actually get a full uh, 250 watts. You can see that solid 250 watts but this one up here is not tuned exactly right because when I tune this for a, it should be tuned for a dip see otherwise we're just stressing the heck out of uh, that little 2e26 and when I do that the drive level 
suffers a little bit and it drops down to uh, 200 watts. So I've got you know a few things to touch up here and there, but it's on right now. It's it's transmitting into this dummy load, which is uh, just barely starting to warm up. I think it's a 250 watt load. It'll take that you know forever. It's just on. It's working. Totally amazing. I guess I could raise the plate voltage a little bit. That's uh, just shy of 1300. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's let's raise it a little bit. 1300. Uh, I hope I don't blow it up. <laughs> that can happen. Okay. Well, we got more everything. Uh, might need to dip the plate again. That's 400 milliamps. That's probably gonna make those tubes hotter than hell. But let's see, we've raised our power to uh, 300 watts. I think it's just uh, it's a tiny bit shy of 300. But uh, I'm sure I'm stressing it pretty hard. And let's peak this. Well, let's, let's peak it right here. Oh yeah, that's an absolute full 300 watts. Okay, well I need to get some good tubes. I need to uh, be a little kinder and gentler to my old 812s. I'm going to try it with some 811s. I think it'll work just fine. But it's alive. It's actually working. Um, I went through a lot in the radio amateur handbooks of the 1949 handbook. And uh, you got to be very careful what they tell you that's in there because what you have may be very different. And what threw me for a big loop is it told me that, that this grid tuning each side, it's a dual capacitor, dual variable capacitor, you know, with a common uh, ground point. They said it was 100 picofarad, so I figured, well, okay, it will should tune about half, you know, somewhere in the middle, not all the way closed, not all the way open at about 50 picofarads. Well, that was wrong. It's 170 picofarads. I actually had to get in and start measuring it. And as low as it will go is about 40 picofarads. So anyway, you, you got to do all the LC ratios for resonance. And it all worked out quite well. And see, I could probably make that coil just a little bit smaller. You see where the uh, uh, tuning capacitor is right here? It's almost all the way open. I'd like for it to be closed a little bit more. So I'll probably take another uh, link off of the uh, grid tuning. Plate tuning is uh, it's at about uh, almost at 80 so I'd say that's okay. I don't think I need because see there would be completely uh, open and down here would be completely meshed. But I'm uh, the grid current peaks, the plate current dips on both the exciter and the amplifier and uh, there's its output, 200 watts. I'm going to leave it like that, like I say, with uh, just shy of uh, 1,300 volts, which is a which is a good number for it. Now with some really tough, strong 811s in there, uh, I may be able to get its rated output. I've got a kludged um, bias supply right here. This is a uh, uh, a filament transformer, but it's got two primaries. So I'm using one primary to drive it, and the, I'm using the other primary as a one-to-one -one secondary. So I get my 120 volts out of it, running it through a little bridge into a capacitor, across a capacitor, with a bleeder resistor on it. I mean, that's about as simple as it gets, and it's plugged into a variac. That's how I can vary it. It doesn't seem to matter uh, in the static condition. i got to remember this darn thing is on. Um, let's turn it off doesn't seem to matter uh, where I set the bias. Uh, 100, 150, it doesn't seem to matter like that. Now, it'll probably matter a lot when I uh, modulate it. But anyway, <clears throat> the James Millen 80991 push-pull amplifier on 20 meters lives again.